So way back in my second year of college, I was in my intro to C++ class where we were making a guess the number program. If you've never heard of that, it's probably one of the most used exercises for learning programming. So the basic premise was that you, the user, the human, were supposed to make up a number between 0 and 100. And the computer's job was to guess your number within the shortest amount of attempts as possible. The best algorithm wins inside the classroom. The only thing was that I wanted to create the best algorithm. So how do you do that? How do you make a computer program that kind of guesses your number between 0 and 100 in the shortest amount of time as possible? Do you just keep on guessing until you get it right? Do you just say 0, 1, is it 2, is it 3, is it 4, is it 5, and keep doing that till 100? Well, obviously, that's going to be one of the worst ways of doing it. It's a way of doing it, but it's one of the worst ways of doing it because it's not efficient. The goal is to create the least amount of trials as possible while doing the search algorithm. So I thought of this in a kind of weird way. At the time, I had no idea what a binary search algorithm was, but if you know what a binary search algorithm is, you know where I'm going with this. So I took the timeline between 0 and 100, and I kind of played a hot or cold kind of game, right? The computer guessed right in the middle. And you, the user, told the computer if the number needs to be higher or lower, right? So if I guess in the middle and your number was above that, you tell the computer it's a little bit above that. It goes in the middle and it sees, hey, is it to the right or to the left? In this case, that'll be to the right since our number is 56 and that's to the right of 50. And from there, it just divides it again. In this case, halfway between 50 and 100 is 75. So the computer guesses 75. 75 is still not quite 56. So the computer says, okay, is it greater or less than that? To the right or to the left? We're gonna tell the computer that it needs to guess lower than that or to the left. So the computer is gonna have that again. Halfway between 75 and 50 is about 62. So the computer is going to guess 62. Now, it keeps having it until it reaches your number. This was kind of the fastest way I could think of that would make this problem faster. I'm pretty sure that there might be a better way of doing this, but this was the best way I could think of, and by far one of the best ways inside the classroom. My algorithm could guess your number between 1 and 7 tries, or 0 and 6 tries, depending on whether you believe arrays start at 0 or 1. That's up for debate. But here's where things start getting interesting. What happens if you graph the amount of tries that the computer takes over a function of the number that it's trying to guess? Well, that's exactly what I did here in Desmos. So if you see right here, from zero to 100, we have sort of a pattern going on, which is pretty dang cool. Um, and this is kind of how the binary search algorithm works. Um, from 0 to 100, it guesses in the middle, and you tell it, is that too high or too low? You know, on this side or this side. Um, and if it's too low, it goes here. If it's too high, it goes here. So that is the magic of the binary search algorithm. It's a kind of cool way of letting a computer kind of guess or read your mind within the shortest amount of tries as possible. In the end, I kind of just saw this project in my computer and I was like, hmm, why don't I just make a video about this? And hopefully I could explain that in a way that makes sense. And that's what matters to me. This video was purely made for fun, uh, but if this is the sort of thing that kind of intrigues you, let me know. If it's something that's just entirely boring to you, then let me know. Either way, just let me know. So until next time, until I make my next video, which is who knows when, I'll see you next time. Goodbye.